Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to know if you're being verbally abused by a woman. I want to share this because it's an experience I had and I want to remove the shame around it because there are many men going through this and they're afraid to speak up. Now, ladies, don't click out. Don't think this is only for men. The topics I'm going to talk about are just as important to you. Many of the aspects are exactly the same. And you need to know if you're being verbally abused as well. The bottom line is this. We've done an amazing job letting men know it's not okay to treat women this way. But we haven't done as good of a job in the reverse. And therefore, many men, just like me, get trapped in shame and embarrassment over being in a situation like this. And even worse, like when I would call, there, you know, once I got help and I started to stand up for myself, I called the police and the police showed up and didn't even talk to me. I'm the one filing the report. And they went right to the woman. What we need is for both sides to recognize this isn't right. It's not okay. So that's why I'm doing this, is to, to make it equal. I'm not condoning, please, ladies, if you've been abused, I'm not condoning it. The, the men that did that, that's not what I'm doing. All I'm trying to do is bring a voice. You went thousands of years with no one advocating for you. Well, no one's been advocating for the men going through this, and it's time that we do that, and that's what my goal is today. So the first thing I want to talk about is a dynamic that's different between men and women. Almost all men, and I choose those words specifically, almost all men will get help and want to get help to stop being verbally abusive. That's not the case with women. And I'm gonna to read to you from Dr. Patricia Evans' book, The Verbally Abusive Man, Can He Change? Now there's a reason, she's an expert in verbal abuse, there's a reason all of her books have men as the abuser in the title. And I'm gonna to read to you why. And men, this is very important that you hear this, all right? Simply put, although I've seen men change, I have never seen a woman transform from seriously verbally abusing her mate to treating him with empathy. The therapists I've talked with about this issue have not seen verbally abusive women change either. I will not say that it's impossible because I cannot say anything is impossible when it comes to the human psyche, only that it's highly unlikely. While thousands of women have told me stories of how they were verbally abused, only three women in a dozen years ever made appointments with me because they themselves were abusive and all three of them had canceled at the last minute. Countless men reached out to me because they were abusive and they showed up. If you are reading this book, hoping your wife or female significant other will change, will stop telling you what you are, what you think, what you should do, what your opinions should be, or will stop raging at you when you explain yourself or when you ask nicely, please don't do that, or please don't call me that. You may try the strategies in this book, but please know that the odds are against your partner changing. I cannot tell you how she should change, how she could change. I have yet to see a woman change from verbally abusing her mate to validating him or her as the case may be. That means women on women violence as well. Why, why is it so unlikely that she will change? And this is heartbreaking. Because for a woman to be abusive over time in her relationship, she must first lose her inner world, her feelings, her intuition, and her receptivity. She must be severed from all that the culture ascribes to be feminine. And so, she must be very damaged indeed. Now, that is not meant as a disparagement of women. That's heartbreaking. Think of it. For a woman to have been so mistreated in childhood that she had to separate 
from the essence of being a feminine woman. And that's what created the abusive structure. So men, if you, once you listen to this and you recognize, wow, I'm with an abusive woman, your best choice is to leave and get help. All right, that's not always the case with women. As, as the studies show, men will change. Men will do the work. There are some that won't, all right? So let's get into what is verbal abuse. What constitutes it so that you can decipher if this is happening in your life. The definition is this. It is the act of defining a person's inner world. So a verbally abusive partner will tell you what you are. For instance, they will call you a dork. That's what mine used to call me, a brat. She didn't call me that, a jerk, weak. They will use disparaging terms for you. They will tell you what you should think and what you should feel. They will tell you what you should believe. They will tell you what you are doing. Like you ever, I'm sure you've had that experience. You're doing something, but they're going, they're, they're telling you you're doing something different. Like they're controlling what you're doing or even lying about what you're doing. They will also tell you what you should be doing. They will withhold care. They will many times not even respond to you, completely shun you. They will threaten you. They will control you. They will define you as an object. They will trivialize, trivialize you. They will name call. They will judge. And this one, sarcasm. People think sarcasm is cute and funny. The Latin root of the word sarcasm means to tear the flesh. When I see, well, I'm not on dating sites, but when I used to see that and women would say, I'm sarcastic, I ran. Sarcasm is veiled anger. It's not humor. It's not funny. We, our culture thinks that sarcasm is funny. It's not. It's abusive. It's veiled anger. It's all of these things. But it's under the guise of, oh, I'm just cute and sarcastic. And that's a verbally abusive person. They, many of them hide, oh, what's the big deal? Lighten up, it's just sarcasm. Sarcasm is to tear the flesh. It is stuffed rage that a person is taking out on you because of their inner loathing. It is not funny, it is not cute, it is not okay, all right? Now, why do they do this? Well, remember, and you'll see as you read this book, ultimately, what happens to the abuser is they feel attacked. Whenever you think, feel, believe, need, want, or like anything different, or if they've made a mistake at all, if you point out anything, it feels like an attack. She tells this wonderful story of how a man, and I'm sure you, I, I went through this on the flip side, was made dinner for his wife. And he was a big cook, and she comes in from work, and she goes right over and starts looking through the mail. And he wrote to her, and he said, now I know why. When she did that, the next thing I remember is she's on the floor underneath me, and I'm nearly choking her to death. Because what happened is, and what happens in the abuser's mind, is they think everything should be oriented around them. They create a fantasy of their partner. And therefore, anything that doesn't fit this fantasy, they attack because they feel it's a personal attack. So here was this man cooking dinner, and the fantasy he had created was that his wife would come in and go, Oh my God, you're so sweet. How can I help you? What would you like me to do for dinner? Instead, she went and read the mail. Nothing wrong with that, right? But for him, for the verbally abusive person who was so mistreated in childhood, it feels like an attack, and so they lash out. Only because they've never had the healing work done. The problem on the female side is they won't get the work done because they've lost their soul, basically. Okay, that's the difference. So, again, what creates a verbally abusive woman? It's a woman who lost herself in childhood, lost her soul. She got defined. Um, as somebody that can't say or hear or speak who she is. Like, just think of that, how devastating that would be. Um, her feelings got decided for her. 
Therefore, her ability to feel has been completely destroyed and taken from her. Basically, the full expression of feeling she's no longer capable of. As a child, they were not embraced, and she realized very early on in her home that to survive her childhood, she had to suppress her ability to feel. She had to suppress what it means to be feminine. She had to lose her soul. Therefore, her only option is to now make you responsible for, your fe for her feelings because she doesn't have any and she's lost touch with them. And now if you do anything that doesn't work with the, f the fantasy construction she's made in her head of what her feelings need to be, she lashes out. You can't fix that, all right? Now men do the same thing to women, but men, you know, because we send the message to men, don't cry, be tough. Well, men can work out of that. They don't lose their soul. They don't lose the essence of what it is to be a man, but it's the opposite with women, all right? So what's the solution? Well, the first thing is to trust what you see and feel, not what you hear. That's what trips people up in abusive situations is they try and figure out the words. Ignore the words. Trust what you see. Trust what you feel, your gut instinct. Let me give you an example. This was just the other day, and that's what spurred this video. I was walking at this park near me, and there was a couple, and... As I walked up, I could tell she was crying and he was talking very loud. That's why I could hear what they were saying. And I heard him say to her, well, I've never seen this side of you. Of course, I want to support you. That's very important to me. But he was standing about five feet away from her. He had his arms crossed. He, was, he, he had um, his chest puffed out. His legs were like, you know, he was planted in the ground like a statue and he had his chin up. He was talking down to her and I'm sitting there going, oh my God, he doesn't mean a word he's saying. This is all abusive manipulation. Whatever's happened in this relationship, he's just sucking her back in. Like it just made my skin crawl and women will do that to you. So whichever side of the dynamic you're on, I beg you, get help. I beg you to stand up for yourself. You don't have to suffer through this. What are the solutions for you? It's self-esteem work and codependence work. I have several options for you. My YouTube channel, go to the self-love playlist, tons of videos. Go to the codependence solutions playlist, tons of options. If you wanna dive deeper, go to www.thegreatnessuniversity.com. It's my online magazine. Same thing, you'll find playlists with articles, videos. You're also going to find free, under the free content button, exercises to download to help you navigate all of this. Now, if you really want to conquer it, then go to my masterclass website, thegreatnessyou.com. That's www.thegreatnessyou.com. And you're going to look for the two masterclasses uh, how to, gosh, I'm forgetting the name, how to put an end to toxic relationships is the one for codependence and how to love your perfect imperfections. That's close. The name is for self-love. Those, those two master classes, you can get them in either audible form if you're on a low budget, but if you want the complete process, you can get the videos and journey books to navigate all of that. So there you go. If you think this will help somebody, if you think somebody's going through this, please get them help, share it with them. If you know a man in your life that's ashamed of this, let him know there's nothing to be ashamed of. Please leave me your comments. And as always, enjoy the journey.